a Model A hot rod and a Model T hot rod from the same pickup to the same drop off, let alone for a father and son. So Scott's gonna tell us the story of these cars. He's gonna be nice enough to do it. We'll walk around to the front here and I'll try to get an angle here out of the sun. So this is his son's car. So he's gonna come over here, he's gonna stand on my shoulder right here. He's gonna talk real loud. So what's the one in the front here? This is your son's car. He's in Tucson at the University of Arizona, right? Yep. Okay, and you told me you started gathering parts for the build when he was 11 years old. Yeah. And you guys were in Indianapolis. Yeah. Okay, so tell us from there what, what, what the story of the car is. Uh, he, he always saw me building hot rods, building cars, and uh, so uh, he wanted to build a car. He was 11, and we bought <laughs> a, a bare frame from a Model A and started with that. And okay. over the course of about three years, collected all the parts to have a running chassis. Um, 1940 banjo rear end. It's a 48 flathead and a 39 top loader transmission. Um, everything completely rebuilt. And when we were done with that, we had a rolling chassis and started looking for a body. We found a complete car in a barn in Ohio that had been sitting there for 30 years and uh, bought the car, took the body off, and uh, that's the body that's on this now. So, so I must have this wrong. I said this was a Model T, but it's a Model A. Model A. So these are both Model A's? Uh, no, this is a 1930 Model A in front, and it's a 27 Model T in the back. Okay, so I just had them flipped. I yep. thought this was the A and that was a T. Yeah. Folks, it shows you how stupid I am. So let's go look at this motor. Tell us what we got here. Uh, it is a 1948 uh, flathead engine, um, completely rebuilt, 30 over. Uh, it took, yeah, for anyone who knows flatheads, it took uh, three flathead engines to build one good one. And so uh, collected a lot of parts and um, eventually got all the machine work done and put it together. And so it's got uh, about, the car's been together for five years now. My son drove this to high school when it was good enough to run. And uh, it's got about three, 4,000 miles on it, somewhere in there. So. so it looks like the top's done, the wood's done. You just need to do yeah. the fabric insert, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we got that going on. So this is a running and driving street legal car. Yes, yeah, Okay, I, I told Scott about the pavilions, about the car show and the pavilions. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, it's dirty. It's been in an aircraft hangar for a while, but... Uh, I think it looks freaking great. The seats, <laughs> the seats are out of a 1966 Mustang, and they've been relocated backwards from the stock position six inches because my son is six foot six. Now, are they adjustable or are they still fi uh, fixed? No, they're fixed. So your son's six six and he'll fit in this? Yes. Yeah. So did you do anything to raise the roof height or is that just stock to no, the car? Stock roof. Wow. Uh, and then there's your fuel cell. Yeah. Put how, how many gallons is that? 14. Okay, 14. Uh, this is an original. It may be hard to see with the camera, but an original. This is a look at the patina, a, folks. A brush paint job from 1951. 1951 uh, brush paint job. And so you can see the brush strokes in it. That looks like a period correct stoplight. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. That one over here too. Look at the brush strokes. See, this is great. And and you guys are gonna leave it this way, right? Or he's gonna leave it this way. Yeah, as far it's his to do what he wants with. Right. Um yeah. So, so he's gonna come up from Tucson. Yeah. Come and visit you and do some work. Yeah. Yeah, we've driven this though from Indianapolis to Louisville. Uh we here's a better shot of that dash. Put new glass in it, uh, so all the windows roll up and down and Okay, a lot of work, so let's get a front clip shot of this to show you what the front clip looks like, which is just beautiful. All right. Now, I had a lot of comments on this T. I posted a picture on Facebook. Yeah. Just a great looking front clip there. So tell us about this car. This is your car. Yeah. So how did this car start out? I think you told me your dad yeah. was involved in this. My now, you, you grew up in Yuma, Arizona. We talked about that because I'm a Phoenix native and we talked about, you know, being in Arizona. So your dad found this in that area. Yeah. How long ago was that? 
He found it in 1995. Wow. In Welton, Arizona. That's 27 years ago, Scott. Yeah. We're old guys. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he nice. found that in Welton. And for yeah. folks that don't know, where is Welton exactly, more or less? Welton is somewhere between Yuma and Gila Bend. Okay. Small farming community. How did he hear about that? To... He he saw an auction flyer. Really? Okay. The car was all original at that time. Completely wow. original. And now we're talking, this was an original Model T? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he bought it and it was not running. It had been in Welton for 30 years up wow. to that point. Um, and the car did not run. So he, he got it trailered home. Now home for him was Yuma. Yeah. At that home, time. Home was Yuma. Um, he, he could not get the car to run. And he did not understand the, the, the three pedals and right. the, the gas on the steering column and all that, right? Now, so, how close to what he found it as is it looking like now? Uh, it's not at all close. That's what I would figure. So okay. It was, it was very, the car was completely stock, a la Beverly Hillbillies, right? Okay. The fenders, the wood wheels, the whole thing. Okay. Um, I got it running and I drove it like that for now, 10 years. Now, he brought it to you or did you yeah. get it shipped I to the, it, Indiana? I got it shipped to Indiana okay. in 1997. So you got it in 97 and you commenced to go do work on it. Yeah, and I, I, spent, I spent a few months and it was ready to fire and uh, Jim Linder from Bubba's Hot Rod Shop. TMC Bubba. Yeah, on the ham. He uh, he helped me get it running, and so I drove it as it was for ten years. And uh, so with I the Model T engine, yeah, that was yeah, in it, the all, twenty horsepower. Yeah. Okay. I got tired of going twenty five miles an hour everywhere. <laughs> okay. Started to collect parts to turn it into a hot rod. And so when did you start the conversion to what we see now? It was about five years ago. Uh, so, wow. Yeah, 2018, right in there. Well, let's start. Let's start with the engine and the exhaust. It's got Oppenheimer heads on it. What else? Yeah. It's got a tri carb he uh, setup. Yeah, this is a, a Y block. Y block Edelbrock. engine. 58 Ford. Edelbrock um, intake. Yeah, three uh, original Stromberg 97s. Okay. Which are all hooked up which is obvious because they're all leaking. I think uh, Stromberg is the German word for leak. And so, I can attest to that. That's why I like um, it stay out in my, in my trailer to curb, curb the enthusiasm of the engines wanting to leak fluid. Yeah. Okay, and then where did you find the body for this? Uh, the, the body is original. And so the, that's maybe one of the last original pieces of the car. So it's we're looking a, at a T-tub here. Yeah, this is all steel. It's never had a patch panel welded in. It it was completely dry original. So was this a Roadster when you bought it? Yeah, Roadster pickup. So it was a Roadster pickup? Yeah. So the bed, has it been changed? The bed was shortened eight inches. So this is the original Roadster pickup bed, Yeah. but it was shortened eight inches. Yeah. So let's kind of look. There's a fuel cell in the back. There's some blankets down here. Yep. He put the battery back there. And did you do the dash installation? No, uh, Tom Culbertson did a lot of the fabrication work on this. So this dash is out of a 1950 Ford shoebox. Wow. And uh, the dash has been shortened and some of the gauge holes filled in, obviously. for. So where did you get the donor for that? Uh, my friend who referred me to you, Bill Jakaki, or Tyrod on the ham. Okay. He... He had a spare dash. He had a shoebox and he had a spare dash. Now, where does he live? In Indianapolis? Indy, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, has a, a rear end, um, a rear end, a Ford 8 inch rear end out of a 66 Mustang. Okay. And um, it's a little bit hard to see in that photo, but um, there is a, a receiver hitch on the back. Right, and you told me that you pull a teardrop trailer. And. Okay, let's get a picture of his phone. Let's get over here in the shade. And this is a teardrop, teardrop that uh, you bought off of GMC Bubba. Yeah. Jim, this was his teardrop. So you pull this teardrop nicely behind this. Yep. 
Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Now, where's the teardrop right now? The teardrop is in Prescott. In okay. Storage. And that's where your dad retired yeah. to. Yeah. So he's got his dad in Prescott. So let's walk around the other side of this. How did you come up with that exhaust system? Uh, Tom Culbertson built it. Okay. And uh, so it custom, uh, I guess, kind of one of a kind. Look at that front clip. That's just so pretty. How beautiful yeah. is that? Yeah. That's yeah. just beautiful. A lot of folks ask about the headlights. Tom had the headlights. I do not know what they are from. They're very so distinctive. I'll, I, I'll tell you what, because I noticed that too. Look at these headlights, folks. Maybe somebody can comment what you think those are. But it's just got such a, such a cool, cool look on the front. Look at that front um, clip. The paint is a 2011 Ford truck color. That's a nice paint. So what is that like a? It's like a metallic bronze. Metallic bronze. That's just beautiful. And I love those wheels. So now these have made the trip from Indiana to Arizona. And uh, now his son can come up. They can go to car shows together. So all, all that really needs to be done on that Model A is the top, pretty much, yeah, right? And the interior. But right. I'll tell you, I kind of like that for ventilation, yeah. especially here in Arizona. Yeah, sure. You know, as long as you're not driving in the rain. Yeah. So let's do one last walk around. Thanks to Scott. Again, I've never hauled a Model T and a Model A hot rod together, and it's such a good story. I, I started talking to Scott when I pulled up and met him in the Safeway parking lot, and I asked him if I could video the story because not only is it a T and an A hot rod, but also two father and son, which is great. And and again, this car here, his son wanted one when he was 11. So together they built one. How great is this? Sorry for the sun, but there's not much I can do about that. Okay, I hope everybody has a good weekend out there. Thanks to Scott for sharing the story of these cars, these wonderful cars. That's it for me. I'm going to get back on the road. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. Remember, drive safe, arrive alive.